So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll tell you about Samurai Gardener by Osprey Games. A game where, for some reason, rather than being out doing samurai things like fighting, you are gardening in the city of Edo. And of course, you still want to earn great honour as samurais do, but you're going to do it by proving yourself as a gardener and having the best garden possible. The way this game works is you'll have a kind of real-time speed challenge aspect of getting your cards and then a spatial awareness puzzle of building your garden in order to optimize points. Now one thing that makes the scoring very interesting in this is you have four different features that you're able to score but once you've scored a feature you flip the card over and you have to score all the different features until you're able to score them again. So you can't just focus on that one feature, building up a big kind of line of that. And that's how this scores. It scores for rows and columns of the same feature on a card. And when you place your card, you can overlap, you can place them next to, diagonal. The only thing is you cannot overlap a feature that is free or more, that would be able to score. And it's just kind of a race to see who can have the most points when someone gets over 25 points. You just play rounds after rounds. So I really enjoy the spatial awareness aspect of this. I enjoy the building your garden and trying to optimise your moves with what you're doing. Unfortunately for me, that's very much in conflict with the almost party nature of the real-time speed going, ah, grab the card, grab the card each round and so because I want to actually look at the cards and think but it's like right cards go out person says e -e, you all go ooh, and grab a card and there's just not really any time to think you've got to rely on your just instinct that, or go right there's this one thing I know I want and then you just go for a card that you see that has that and you just hope no one else is going for it pure chaos at that point which can be quite good in a party game game but the whole then building your garden doesn't feel like a party game so you've got this conflict of these two identities that this game has and the fact that it only plays two to five players means that it doesn't really scale high enough to be a true party game either so you've got that kind of party game mentality of just grabbing what you can grab and then you're kind of like ah oh, this card isn't actually any good for me, where can I put it? And then you spend quite a bit of time just kind of going, oh, I could put it there, I could put it there, arranging this puzzle. And it would be better, to my mind, to think about it ahead of time and actually take a card that would further you quicker and better. So there's actually a variant I have tried for this with regards to my thoughts on that. And that is to do drafting. Now, what this means is that you end up taking multiple cards each round rather than a single card which can be a bit of an issue with regards to the game speed and balance but it means that you're actually thinking more about what you're doing when you're drafting cards you're thinking well how's this going to connect to the next one but you still then choose the order to do the build and each person builds a card scores build a card scores so you're not building all your cards, then doing a scoring phase. I found that that works well. And the way I've been doing that is the number of cards in hand to draft is equal to the number of players. So if you're playing two player, then you get dealt a hand of two cards and you're only going to have two rounds then that you've got seeing, which actually works better at two player than, than it does higher because it means that you've got fewer choices. But it means that you're going, oh, well, I'm going to be giving this to them. What have they got? And I want this, oh, but oh, if I give them that, they're going to score that. It works really well for that two player. It really does. Um, so if you want to try that as a two player variant that's more thinky, less party game, then feel free. Um, I personally, I think that's the best way to play this. For those who want to play the normal way, with regards to the way it scales, 
The fact that the number of cards out is the same as the number of people means that it does work perfectly fine for that two to five range. But because of the party game nature, if you're trying to have the, oh no, we've gone for those cards and having people trying to then grab other cards and knocking stuff over like this, I, I do recommend don't have drinks on the table for this game. Then you're gonna want more players because the more people you have, the more chaotic that aspect is where you get, oh no, everyone went for the same card and then everyone's scrambling, not sure what else to go for. So that really, if you're wanting to play it that way, you want four or more. It doesn't really work very well at two because it's like, oh, I haven't got that one. Well, I take the other one, which means that it falls very flat. But I do highly recommend drafting with this. Works really nicely for just a nice game. I really like the artwork, the theme. Okay, it doesn't really make sense that it's samurais, but the whole Japanese garden with the artwork works absolutely lovely. You know, it's just this nice little small game that just is charming if you don't mind the kind of clashing of identities or are willing to play my drafting variant. So that's my thoughts on Samurai Gardener by Osprey Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, be sure to give it a like and also check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.